Hi guys, it's Sarah with Grassroots Evolution Tarot, and I am here to bring you a message with a sign of Pisces for love and soul connections. Keep in mind it's a general message, so take what you feel resonates for you, disregard the rest, and go about your day. But know that no matter what messages do come through today, it's still up to you and your active free will, the choices you make and the steps you take in this world to get whatever the fulfillment it is you'd like to see. To me, that's personal freedom, it's personal power, and it's something that only you can do because it lies at the tips of your fingers, not the soul's your feet so use it wisely my friends for all my subscribers i just want to give you guys a big shout out i love you love you love you from the bottom of my heart thanks for being here and hey guys if you're new to my channel welcome thanks for stopping by if you like this and you'd like to see more of my readings please hit subscribe join the journey with me i'd love to have you along the ride as well as guys if you like this or if it does resonate or you just want to support me help me out smash that like button let's circulate these messages a little bit further to those who may also need to hear it as well as one last little bit of housekeeping if you guys would like to follow me on instagram you now can at grassroots underscore evolution underscore tarot. I am putting daily posts over there as well if you'd like a little bit of extra content. So before I get into the reading, I'm just going to take a moment to call in Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, my team of light, and any of your spirit guides that would be here for the highest good of the entire collective watching, I invite them to join. I'm going to ask these guides to guide, guard, bless, and protect myself this reading and any of you who would ask for it to use me as the clearest channel possible, delivering messages that are for the most far reaching of you, but again, only for the highest good of the entire collective, no second rate messages today. So also what I want to say is if I do trigger you, if I say something that makes you feel a certain way or brings up some uncomfortable memories, really use this as empowered vulnerability. How did it make you feel? What was it? What is it attached to? And how can we use this information right now going on forward in our day to day to make a positive change in our world? Okay, so let's see what we got. Now remember, like I said, no matter what the cards come through, it's still up to you, right? So what I'm going to do is three different piles. I'll do a pile for your energy, Pisces, a pile for your love or soul connection, and then a space in between, so a shared energy between the two of you. Keep in mind, this love or soul connection could be a family member, it could be a friend, it certainly could be a soulmate or a soul connection that's tied to you romantically, but it's just some sort of um, connection that is written in the ether, is written in the stars, and you have a soul contract to fulfill, okay? So on your side, there's three cards, and this is amazing. Princess of Swords, you can see. Princess of Wands, card got a little bent. And you also have the star. So for some of you, this could be an Aquarius in your world. You could have Aquarius in your chart. I apologize for my birds, they're gonna get loud right now. I think they feel when spirit starts coming in. But there is, what I heard is, forward movement. But they're baby steps. It's the first little movements towards what I also heard is healing. For some of this, it's because we have to have a conversation with this princess of swords. This could be a Gemini, a Libra, an Aquarius, if it doesn't resonate on your side, okay? But also I feel like it's somebody who is action oriented, or this is you knowing that it's time to take actions. It's time to do what you need to do to be able to be in charge of your own healing, is what I heard. So let's get some more messages, please, Spirit. Can you tell me about the Princess of Swords, the Princess of Wands, and the Star? So you have the Six of Coins and the Three of Coins. And right away with this, what I got, okay, and this may not resonate for everyone, but this Three of Pentacles in the reverse with the Six here, I feel like there's a return to balance, and this could be releasing third-party situations. So a third party, it may be, yes, that there's more than two in this romantic relationship. This also could be that you have a lot of people around you. I heard bystanders, but there could be a lot of people around you that certainly have an opinion on what they think that you should do. And I feel like for some of us, if this resonates, this energy, this energy that's not working with you, okay, because the Three of Pentacles, this is togetherness, this is partnership, this is working together, this is also in communion with spirit, but there's a block here. So I'm going to read the blockage for that. 
but also know that I think once you get yourself out of that place where we care what other people think, or we're putting more weight into their opinions than ours, we're going to come into a really big place of stability and balance. And for some of you, this is financial gain that whoever you've been working with, it may be a partner in business as well, they're not doing their part is what I heard. So this is where you may actually have to take the step forward, have these conversations, but like, you know what? I'm not, a, <laughs> what I'm hearing is I want to make money in this endeavor. I want to succeed and we have to put the work in to do that. So for some of you, I feel like what you're, what you're learning, I heard is you're gaining confidence and you're gaining the ability to tell people what you need to do so that you can experience success. And this star, it's not just healing, it's also wish fulfillment. So I think on your side, you're very aware that you have the power to put the steps forward, those baby steps forward to accomplish and achieve your goals in whatever the situation is. So I'm going to pull some cards now for the soul connection side, please. Spirit, can you tell me the energy of the soul connection, please? So two cards that fell out was the eight of coins. I definitely feel like they're learning their lesson. Also, they're working on the craft, but they have the tower here. So it could be a lot of different things. What I heard is there could be changes in their work situation. There could be changes in their financial situation. Something that they've been working on, what I heard is come crashing down. Or also that crash and burn. But there's also changes, I feel like, in the way that they need to learn lessons. Changes in the way that they need to work and hone their craft. So let's get a little bit more spirit. Can you tell me about this tower for the love and the soul connection? You have the eight of swords. For this person, them learning their lessons, these are two very, very root chakra cards. This is the chakra wisdom tarot, if you're curious. Okay, but these two, with this self-confidence, I do feel like this solar plexus energy with the tower, there's been a lot of changes. And for some of you guys, there's two eights here. Your person, they're learning major lessons through major cycles. Some of them could be coming through a lot of karmic endings right now, but I think they know that the way that they've been doing things in the past, it's not going to work for their future. So they need to figure out what is it I need to let go of? What is it that I want to focus my energy on and build? And how can I implement the changes that are happening? For some of you guys, what I heard is the changes that are happening in the world, they may not be really welcome. It may not be something that they're comfortable with. Some of us, what I heard as well, we like to know what's happening. We want things to be predictable. We like routine. And on this side, something's happening that's making them rethink a lot of things and making them want to put work in. Whether this is with you, whether it's a partnership, whether it's whatever the the work issue is. Spirit, let me what are they so what are they letting go of is the four of coins. And this I feel like is withholding and holding everything to themselves. So I think it's been and I so I heard it's been a very valuable soul lesson for this person to realize that if they keep everything to themselves, if they hoard the resources, how are they in a partnership? One thing also I heard is that this is partially as well what's being let go of because maybe in the past they could have been in relationships or situations where, you know, the finances with another person were very, very separate. And potentially, if this makes sense for you, it may be that, you know, we kind of we need to pool our resources. If we want to be financially stable, you know, we need to make sure that the distribution of um, bills is equal too, right? So for example, if if one person is always buying the groceries, right, and the other person is putting money into, you know, video games is what I heard, or just things just for themselves, something that they, they want because it's their money, but they have no problem, what I heard, is eating food, right, or eating the groceries that are purchased if they're not pulling their weight financially in terms of, you know, let's say, you know, you break it up where you pay the hydro bill and I'll pay the internet, right? And let's say that they decide, you know, why? Why would I do that? You pay the hydro bill. I don't want to pay this bill. There could be something where it's just there needs to be more equal distribution of wealth and finances here. And I think for some of you guys, your person's learning their lessons because I think that they've had to come into a real point of maturity right now. So tell me one more thing about this four of coins because I do feel like 
That's what's being let go. That's what they're understanding. They can't hold it to themselves. And I also feel like this is emotions as well. This person could be an earth sign as well that you're dealing with with all of the pentacles here. With these two. You could be Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. But I also feel like they're realizing that they can't keep guarding their heart because it's not helping. These cycles and loops where they've been doing this their whole life or maybe their whole adult life or within the past couple of relationships, it didn't help them grow. It didn't help them move closer to the other person. In fact, it's going to stop that because when we put a block on our heart, how are we going to invite other people into this actually authentically? So Spirit, tell me about this Four of Coins, please. Thank you. And you have the High Priestess. For some of you, the soul connection, one of the things that they are ignoring is their own gut instincts, their own inner knowings, and I also heard there could be telepathy as well. Okay, some of the things that they have kept to themselves, maybe more knowledge of a spiritual connection than the letting on, but I do believe this has to do a lot with as well, just ignoring their gut instincts, right? They may have known what to do the whole time, but they ignored it, and what happens when we do that? What happens when we keep that to ourselves? The tower comes in because it says, hey, I've been trying to tell you for a while there's some changes that need to come, but you weren't listening. So I had to get your attention some way, so I created a tower moment. What card were we going to look at the reversed for? The three of coins on your side. So let's see here. Three of coins. Spirit is just remembering, reminding me. So three of coins. In the reverse, discusses a competition, a distraction, being uninvolved, forgetfulness, and unthinking vagueness. So for on your side as well, I feel like this, this could definitely be competitiveness. We know that we need to remove ourselves from that because we're not competing with anybody here. If your person or your soul connection is feeling like they need to compete, and they need to compete with you, I feel like this is really where it's time to say, well, why? Why do you want to compete with me? Instead of competing against each other, why don't we work together? Why don't we, I heard, show accountability to each other? So I'm going to grab some messages here for the shared, and that was quick, the universe. Your shared energy, the universe is bringing energy in, they're bringing experiences in, they're bringing people. <clears throat> they're asking you to go to places and they may even be bringing things in is what I heard in terms of um, could be rocks crystals there could be something cool that you find on your path that you know you pick it up and you're like wow I can really feel the power there they're asking me to show you something and it's really weird okay but this ring I believe and I'm not sure I know it's mother of pearl and I almost want to say there's onyx in here it is silver I purchased it a few years ago and honestly I was so drawn to it but I thought it was ugly like couldn't wear it and then I had a really beautiful mother of pearl pendant on my neck that came off in the water and I lost it and all of a sudden it was like well it's time to put this on and I do believe spirit was like that mother of pearl over my heart it had done its work and it was time to be returned back into nature no matter how much it upset me and it was time for this ring to do what it needed to what I also want to say about that is to remember that spirit guides do come through with our jewelry as well because someone else has had this so what you may want to do is cleanse it for sure right cleanse if you purchase jewelry or if it's something that comes into you what i heard is it could even be like a family member a grandmother or something like that somebody has given you their jewelry it's nothing wrong with wanting to cleanse it okay also they're reminding me another one this ring i was given my mom asked me to go through a bunch of stuff take a ring and this ring belonged to the woman who first introduced Reiki to me and at least my, my, my mom, I can't talk about my mom taught me, but this was her teacher. And it's interesting that when I feel it as well, it is almost like there's times where she may be a guide too. Okay, so that's a total digression from your reading, but it has to do with something. But there is a guide here for you and if you're drawn to something you may not understand why at the time it may be six months down the line or like my ring it might be a couple years down the line where I had it and I mean I paid I think it was 20 or 30 bucks <laughs> you know at the time it was something that I didn't really want to spend the money on but I was compelled to and now I mean I, I really enjoy it and so hopefully that resonated tell me about the world here for the shared energy 
We have the Queen of Cups in reverse. More about this. And the Five of Cups. I heard closed off your heart. And with the Five of Cups, there's been a lot of heartbreak. I do feel like potentially both of you are trying to come out of this. The universe is, I think, trying to show you as well that what I heard is there's alternative ways of being. There's alternative ways of thinking. This Five of Cups energy as well, I think it's important because she's not focusing on any of them. There's none. There's two that are upturned or three that are upturned, but she's not looking at any of them regardless of, you know, whether it's the five, like whether they're up or down. And I think what this is important is it's like because it doesn't matter whether they're up or down. She has her own in her heart. She does not need those other ones. And to me, this is a change. This is an absolute change with the five. And it's coming into alignment with our truth because you know what? This may be like, well, we have all these cups, but do any of them fulfill me? If they don't, it's because we need to work on our own. This queen of cups in the reverse as well. I'm going to grab you that message because I find this book is pretty awesome for that. Nice. Now we have to find the queen zone. They just keep saying holding back, so I'm going to leave it alone, but I do feel like the universe is kind of bringing lessons here too that say when we hold back from other people, when we hold back from our heart, when we hold back from the truth of our heart as well, we're not showing up, the word is authentically in our world. So I do feel like for some of you, there's a big block to self-love and self-care. And that's first and foremost what Spirit wants to remind you is that you need to love yourself first. You need to heal yourself first. And you need to really listen to what your own heart wants before you can pursue other endeavors. Because if you don't, then you're not really knowing what you want. You're getting into relationships, but I heard is kind of blind as well. So for some of you guys, I definitely do feel like the shared energy is really needing to learn your own hearts. Like, I want to get this message. There's the king. Seven. Queen. Abandonment. Narrow-mindedness. Reactionary intolerance. That kind of makes sense, too. In, in ways, this intolerance and reactionary... Because if we're, again, if we're not in our own heart space, if we're not focusing on what we need to focus on and healing us, and if we're closing our heart off, we may be acting in ways towards the people that we love that are actually hurting them. So Spirit, can you get a little bit more before I move on? And you have the Three of Cups. Because what is the shared energy Spirit wants you to work with? Is being loving and kind and celebrating your love for each other, the love for your friends, the love for your family, the love for yourself, and working with spirit, knowing that all of these cups are golden, shiny, and full, I heard, and they're yours for the taking. So the bottom of the deck is the two of coins, another one about balance, making sure that everything is balanced so that whatever this energy with the queen of cups is, it's still sitting a little bit yucky, honestly, that energy. I'm going to grab... This is obsidian, black obsidian, which is really, really great in absorbing energy, negative energy, as well as it can absorb energy in your room. So if you wanted to get a chunk of black obsidian, it's volcanic glass. It's pretty cool. It can actually help clear the space. So I'm going to take that off my heart. If you guys feel that heaviness as well, like if you are feeling like just Scorpio energy is what I heard as well, like manipulation, even with that queen of cups in the reverse. Like you both could have had something or people in your world as well that treated you like this so that when you guys come back together, you've learned lessons about that. I'm not exactly sure, but I feel like you may on your own. But that to me as well speaks of, it could be you Pisces, because the Queen of Cups being a water sign could just be like, you haven't really felt yourself lately. But if you haven't, what's important is to get out and to spend the time with the people that you know you love, that, that you know they love you, and that you have fun with, that you can find the joy in the conversation and being together is all you need. 
as well as oh my gosh some of what i heard is some of you may want to join a trio singing band so for some of these things it may have to do with three people anyway all right last card is the king of coins and it fell out in reverse as well I'm going to go back to this one as well. Volatility, punitive, alcoholism, irrationality. It definitely sounds like, um, as well with this Queen of Cups and the King of Coins as well, that like this person is not stable and I am picking up on both sides. Okay, rather this this could be masculine, feminine. This could be two women, two men. It doesn't matter. Okay, it's just the energy. But what I do feel is that this King of Coins really resonates more on the soul connection side, and I feel this side more on your side. Okay, and I feel like that this is both of you having to see your own stuff, right? To see your own worth and to see what needs to be changed so that you can come together because I think the behavior and the ways that you've been have been hurting each other as well as hurting yourself. So the universe is definitely making sure that your lessons are being brought forward. And again, on your side, I see like this princess of wands, it's time to move forward with action. And they, on the spiritual connection side, they're being forced to take some sort of action because spirit's all around going, you know what, you need to listen to me. You didn't listen to me and I brought in the tower. And the universe, with the world card here as well, showing you, you know what, I'm showing you what you need to see. Please see it. Please don't ignore me. As well as what I heard is, it could just be your spirit going, you know what, it's really time now to release our toxic traits because we know deep down inside when we're doing something that's toxic, we have an idea that we're doing that. So I'm going to get some clarification on the love and soul connection side and your side. So first off, Pisces engagement. It says your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. And that could be what you're wanting. That could be those um, movements forward. That could be the discussion that needs to be had. And you also have forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. And I feel like that is exactly on point because whatever healing you're doing right now puts to come back and within this partnership, first off, the more commitment we have to ourselves, right, the better we are going to be in a relationship. But I also feel like when you work on healing yourself and bringing that healing, it's going to help this as well because you're going to have more commitment to your goals and to what matters to you. And what I heard is to focus on what matters most to you. Spirit, can you tell me about the soul connection side? Thank you. Two cards came out. Make the effort and calling in your soulmate. I believe this person truly wants you back. Okay? They want to be with you. They want to be around you. They want to be in your energy. Some of them might not know how yet because, again, they've got these tower moments and they've got some pretty toxic traits that need to be worked out. And they're not sure how to come at you because they want to come at you, right? I do feel like this make the effort is, again, with that Eight of Pentacles, they're going to learn their lessons. They're going to do it because they know that you're too smart for that. If they come back the way they've done before, you're going to take one look out and be like, nah, get out of here. Right? So we have make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take and calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. For some of you, what I heard, and on the soul connection side, I heard that there could have been telepathy, they couldn't even been ignoring it. If you feel on your side, like if you've been hearing their prayers, if you've been feeling a drawback to them, trust your intuition as well, because I believe too, that they're trying to actively get you back because they're trying to learn the lessons. They may not know how to go about it yet, but they may be sending off feelers out through the ethers. So let's find out the shared energy of the connection, please, which was two cards again, healing family issues, and it is safe for you to love. Know that it's safe for you to love because as long as you are both healing the issues within your current families, it could be, you know, forgiving our parents as well. Like it says, your love life benefits as you forgive your parents and open your heart to give and receive the highest love of all. 
to me, this shared energy as well, this saying it's safe for you to love, just open your heart. That is also that Queen of Cups in reverse, like holding back, not wanting to give give it out. But Spirit's saying, you know what? Things are being healed right now. It's safe for you to love. And you know what? One of the only ways we can actually heal is to give our heart open. So if you have closed it off potentially because of something that's happened in your childhood or because some of us, we have really difficult relationships with our parents as well. And if you if that resonates, here's where I feel like it's really, really important to do what you need to do to find forgiveness. It doesn't mean that what happened was okay, that if we had a shitty childhood that, oh, it's all right. But what it does mean is that we've learned from that and we're not going to hold on to the blame and the anger towards other people because they can't change it by us doing that, right? All we can do is imagine Maybe even what I heard is if you need to imagine in your quiet time going into sacred space with this person, having this conversation, you know, saying I forgive you. And I think it's also important to try and find a way to acknowledge what happened. It doesn't mean you have to have an actual conversation with this person. You may want to, but I feel like even going into your mind's eye in that sacred space and giving yourself a hug, giving them a hug. And knowing how this affected you, it's really important. So I'm going to bring one last message here for you, actually two. I have the Past Life Oracle. So I'm just going to grab a message for any blocks that we may have moving forward. Spirit, on this Pisces side, what are the blocks? You have Biblical. Is there any other blocks here? Thank you. Lessons and Blessings. And Mother. So for some of you, this soulmate or soul connection, it could actually be a mother figure. And it was picking up mother in the middle here. So for some of you, this particular soul connection, we have ships as well and movement. For some of you, what I heard is you may have had to flee. There may have been persecution. It may be that you're learning lessons right now from biblical times and definitely needing to forgive our mother. Because as we forgive our mom for the ways that maybe they didn't mother us and the ways we wanted them to, our own mothering gets better, okay? So I think that this is really important that we're learning the lessons that some of this has been done over time as well. For many of you as well, I feel like you may resonate a lot with the stories, biblical stories, even if you don't share the religious affiliation, okay, is what I'm hearing. So, also it could be that, yeah, this relationship existed in biblical times, and I'm hearing a lot strongly like persecution. You may have been persecuted for your beliefs. On the love and soul connection side, you have Asia here. For some of them, I heard they could they could be from Asia, they could have Asian descent, they could have really, really strong past life memories of Asia as well. Also, I heard that they could feel displaced. So here's my example, okay? I spent two years in South Korea when I was, I don't know, 23, 22, 23, up till 24. And even though I've come back home, I live in Canada, my heart feels like I have two homes because my two years in South Korea felt like home to me and there's times where I'm homesick for something that I can't have here because I live in a small town so I usually have to make it. So for example, my last time was juke like Korean porridge, rice porridge. I put it in the Instant Pot and made it. It was all right. But I definitely didn't have the company or all the little side dishes and but it was better than not being there and I feel like on this side, it's not my story, okay? But this person could feel like that. If they have been somewhere else and or they're not from here originally, right? So they may have immigrated. I feel like there could be something on their spot that's still tying them there, okay? For some of them, they may still have children or family in Asia. But that's just for some of you. I'm going to still pull one more message. But I do feel like that could be also like there's been displacement. Okay. Ooh, my card flipped but it didn't come out. One more please do it. There's like so this many. Phobias. Trees. Wars and battles. Karmic relationship. This person also may have a lot of fears of relationships because in the past they have been fighting. In the past they have been horrible. There could be abandonment issues on their side as well, just like we have mother here, mothering here as well that discusses abandonment.
with the trees here, what I feel like may be most important to center themselves is to get outside, is to come from the place of the trees, to be there and to be all withstanding, I heard, all listening, all observing, right? One with the atmosphere. They're still taking part, but it's in a silent way. Might be helpful for both of you or for this person to go and just to listen to the sound of the trees as the wind blows. Because I feel like there are key codes in that as well. There's a lot of importance to the trees. For some of you as well, I heard like your partner or the soul connection could actually like be somebody who's in the wilderness a lot. So spirit, wow, on your side, so advice going forward, you have gentleness and miracles on your side. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Remember to be gentle with the people around you, your loved ones, and to know that miracles are coming when you put your best foot forward and when you focus on the good, when you focus on the positive and you show your gratitude and you work on your own healing, you're gentle with yourself, you're gentle with others, the universe will reward you. So keep your mind open and keep your eye out for that. Spirit advice for the soul connection, please. What's the advice going forward for the soul connection? I see soul connection, dreaming, and innocence came out. They could be having a lot of dreams right now. I heard those dreams even could center in Asia, but they're needing to listen to what the call is. They're needing to heed their call. And this innocence as well, I feel like it's important because for some of them, they may be newer on their spiritual journey. Other ones, they may have been on this a really long time, okay? But there's never, ever a place where we stop learning. We always can learn. Every single day there's experiences that we can learn from. So I think it's really important as well is to come to each experience with this sense of innocence rather than being jaded and shut off to the world and say, you know what, I'm going to encounter everything like it's the first time. It doesn't mean that we aren't going to use our powers of discernment right in our years of experience in this world, but it does mean that we're not going to prejudge everything. So, a few more cards came out, which was decisions, memories, and love. I definitely feel like this person has been going back and forth in their brain. I heard they're racking their brain. They want to show you love. They're trying to make a decision right now what's right for them. And they may be going through their memories. What I heard is they could even be flip-flopping on, you know, there's some things that are good. There's some things that are bad. And they're really trying to choose how they want to move forward. So last message for the shared energy is advice for the shared energy going forward is be spontaneous. Do something fun just to change up that energy, change up that routine, and, you know, feel like you get to live a little bit. So for some of you, it may be like a spontaneous trip, could be a road trip, could be a walk, you know, a spontaneous text, a spontaneous phone call, just something. You know, not everything has to be planned out. It may be really helpful, again, I heard for both of you guys to get out of your comfort zone. So that's the message I have. I hope it resonated. If it did and you want to let me know, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from it. But other than that, I love you guys and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.